Okay. So I'm checking. Is the screen the the slide? Do you want to look? Yep. I'm good. Okay. All right. I think I'm ready to roll. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Beth Slutty. I'm the superintendent with West Fargo Public Schools. I have been serving in this role for, um, this will be my sixth year, but I have been uh, in the districts. Um, this will actually be my 30th year, starting in Harwood um, and then doing a variety of different roles. So um, this is not my first bond referendum. Um, we've I've been part of the task forces for the past, and I'm very excited to share with you what we are proposing. Um, the purpose of today's meeting is to make sure that you have all the information you need so that you can decide whether you want to vote yes or no on the referendum on September 26th. So moving right along. The first thing I wanted to share with you is that we had a process and we've always had a process for making decisions about um, what would go on a bond referendum. And that process was called the long range facility planning process. Um, we began our work in February or in actually of September of 22, but the whole task force was set forth um, after the board approved that we establish this task force. The purpose of the task force is to really um, delve into what the needs of the district are and then to make determination about what would actually go on the bond referendum. The first meeting was in September and we worked all the way through March of this past year, 2023. And um, the membership for the, the work included elected officials. We had our mayors involved, community members, business owners, and of course, our parents and our educators um, who have either learners in the district or are working in the district to really come together to make those decisions. At the final meeting, the task force members were asked to vote on which items they really felt needed to be included on the bond referendum. And we were looking for 80 percent support. So this was not a rubber stamp committee. This was a um, committee that really had to make some decisions and not everything was approved to be added to the bond referendum. Um, I'd also add that the administrators such as myself were not voting members. So we really wanted this committee to make the decisions on the will of the people and what they felt the community could support and what they felt was the most important. I have neglected to tell you one important piece of information about this meeting. I haven't done one of these for um, quite a while as far as um, on Zoom, so um, I apologize, but there is a link um, in the um, description of on YouTube where you can um, submit questions to be asked. And so I'll go through the whole presentation and then at the end, I will um, take those questions um, with some help from some team members. So you can go ahead and look in the description on YouTube. The next piece of information I wanted to share is what our enrollment projections are. You can see on this slide, starting all the way back to 2003, all the way through 27, 28, the increase in enrollment that um, is happening in our district. Um, it's, it's really showing you at, in a, one snapshot why we're needing to continue to build schools and why we are um, making the decision to move forward with a bond referendum. This past 22-23 school year, we had 1,103 kindergartners, we had 919 sixth graders, and almost 18 seniors. So as these students move through the system, even if there are no new families coming into the district, you can see that we will be growing each year um, just by moving up each grade level to the next year. Our um, pattern has been four to 600 learners per year. And when you think about that, 500 learners is a large elementary school. So it is, it's a critical need that we are continuing to have to have buildings and places for all of these learners to go. This chart um, we'll share with you. I'm just going to pause for one moment.
My apologies. We were having a little bit of technical difficulty. I'll just be a moment. Okay. I'm told. I'm told I am now sharing the slides weren't, they were moving on mine and they weren't moving on yours. So my apologies. Okay. This slide um, shows you our school comparison sizes. It's on. Um, West Fargo Public Schools is currently the second largest district in the state of North Dakota. Bismarck is the largest. And um, the numbers that as we are growing are, are changing, of course. So I think we're about a thousand less than Bismarck. And we have about 1,200 more students than Fargo Public Schools. The top chart, uh, bar chart, shows our middle school size. Liberty Middle School is the largest middle school in the state of North Dakota. Cheney is the fourth largest, but not behind much. Um, there's two schools that are slightly larger. And then the bottom bar chart shows you the high schools. The blue line shows that Cheyenne High School is the largest high school in the state of North Dakota with West Fargo High School being the third largest. So in the past, our uh, stakeholders, as we work through each one of our bond referendums have come to um, they come to what they call I guess guideposts where they want to keep schools within a certain size range so our high schools our largest high schools are 1550 at the cap and we try to keep our middle schools not any larger than 1200 so that um, kind of helps you um, think about how we are making the decisions as we're moving forward the committee review process I did touch on this um, it began with different people from our district that would come in and establish a need for each project. So I'm going to use South Elementary as an example. South Elementary is one of our oldest schools in the district. It's on the north side. It has not had any major renovations, and it is in need of major renovations. Um, so they came to one of our meetings. Um, the principal and other team members explained about the school and what the needs of that school are. Then the committee identified pros and cons for each project. So in the case of South Elementary, there were um, pros and cons about, okay, would we want to rebuild a brand new school there? Do we want to um, move up since there's not a big footprint? Do we want to go across the street? Um, do we want to have a school at that south location or do we want to put one further north? So all of those pros and cons were discussed. Then there was um, a time where we tried to gauge an agreement for the group for each project. And then we would come back and we would vote on each project. And again, getting 80% in order for it to go on the bond referendum on September 26th. So what made it to the board? The board had to approve um, what was going to go on the bond. The first thing that was approved was a new elementary school somewhere in the Mustang Hawk feeder system. So on the south side where we're seeing the most, gro most growth right now, um, it would need space for up to 576 learners. And we need that space by 2027, 2028. And of course, that's because with four to 600 new learners each year, you can see that we're, we're filling up a school each year just with that sheer numbers. That comes in at a price tag of $34.8 million. Um, we do the very best that we can with taxpayer dollars because, um, you know, we want each of our schools to have equitable spaces, but we don't try to go above and beyond in one school compared to another school. We try to maintain that standard of of um, quality for each one of our learners and their families. That of course, with inflation that we have seen since the last time we built a school um, has is gone up, but that's where we're at today. Then um, looking at the expansion of Heritage Middle School in Horace. I often get asked this question. Um, this school was built for 900 middle schoolers at the capacity. And that was done intentionally because we look to the next five years for what spaces will be needed. So the intent with Heritage Middle School was to build it for 900 learners, but then to have the plans in place to expand it when those numbers come in. So for up to 1,200, making it the same size as Cheney and Liberty Middle Schools, that um, expansion is 19.6 million. And Heritage is expected to exceed its current capacity by the fall of 2027. 
And a similar story that is for Horace High School, again, wanting to be um, just very purposeful about how taxpayer dollars are sent, spent. Um, we had planned for up to 1,050 learners to fit at, at Horace High School, but with the plan to expand to 1,550 um, when the time comes. Those uh, needs are by the fall of 2026, and that package comes in at 32.4 million. I, I think it would be a very fair to say that back in 2018, when um, we were passing a bond referendum for heritage and horse, could we see the future and see what was going to happen after the pandemic and inflation? Um, would they have chose at the time to build it out to capacity at that time? Possibly. But it also, when you think about Horace High School opening its doors with 300 learners, um, that's a lot to take into to have a huge space that needs to be heated and cared for um, for 300 learners. So there's um, thoughts on that too, but I just wanted to address that if that was a question. Further, we are looking to expand the early childhood special education services. So we currently have um, our youngest learners, three, four, and five-year-olds with special needs at the Clayton A. Ladon campus. Um, and right now, um, that space takes all of the learners in that age range who have special education needs. And so if you are a family that's living in Horace and you have a child with special, special needs, your child's being transported all the way up north. Furthermore, as the district is growing, so is this program. So we would be looking to um, have a south side space for early childhood special education. Um, it could possibly be on the Meadowlark in the um, Rocking Horse neighborhood. That has not been decided yet, but that is one, one possibility. That would be an $8 million um, cost to the uh, taxpayers. Then um, trying to be smart as we look to the future, upon completion of the FM diversion, we're anticipating growth on the north end. The time is now to be purchasing land. So we are um, getting the best um, options possible at the best price. Um, and being prepared so that um, we're not paying a premium for newly protected area on the north side, coming in at five million. So we don't ever want to continue building and not to continue to up uh, make sure that all of our buildings, even our older buildings, are being maintained and still have equitable spaces for our learners. So we would be um, proposing a multi-purpose room at West Fargo High School, which is very much needed. Um, inclusive playground at the Early Childhood Center so that all of our learners who have special needs and are attending that center have access to a playground that they can play on, even if they're in a wheelchair or have some other needs. Special education improvements district-wide to support learners and safety for our educators both. Um, some restroom renovations district-wide. Um, renovations to our north side elementary schools to ensure that they have dedicated space for programming such as art and music. And um, as we've grown, sometimes those rooms get absorbed and we want to make sure that we're keeping up with those spaces. And then flexible seating um, for our secondary schools would be a next need. The package would also include renovations and an expansion of South Elementary. I um, touched on this earlier. You will um, recall that uh, a new, brand new building for an elementary school is nearly 35 million. Um, the task force really looked at South. There are some areas of the of the school, such as the office area and the gym, that have been um, improved and um, and they are in great shape to be used. So what we'd be looking at doing is keeping those spaces, but re. Um, redoing a better job with expanding South Elementary and getting the other spaces um, in a place that is more equitable. And um, that would take place in phases over time so that we could keep South Elementary open throughout the process of the renovation and expansion. And then safety and security upgrades. Um, the projects will include an inst installation of fire sprinkler systems at the three remaining schools that currently do not have them, and that's Westside, South, and Eastwood. 
and then adding interior lockdown door installations district wide. So, for example, if we do have somebody in the building that doesn't belong there, we can see them on the cameras, but then we can um, have interior lockdown doors so that we can contain um, that individual or those individuals in a space. And finally, access to a third sheet of ice. Um, the district is um, looking at a collaboration and an expansion of Veterans Memorial Arena. And so we would be collaborating with the West Fargo Youth Hockey Association and West Fargo Park District to add a third sheet of ice. And what that will really do for us is that each of our feeder systems will have its own sheet of ice in designated space. Um, we learned that providing a full sheet of ice on our own is 15 million. And so this is a great opportunity for us to, um, to be able to add that ice so that our learners who are playing hockey or there's other reasons that are um, opportunities on the ice that they have better practice times and um, their own designated space. So that is a great collaboration for us. And then how much will this um, cost me as a taxpayer? And so I do believe that uh, Levi Bachmeyer, our business manager and expert in this area has just joined the meeting. And so I'm going to ask him if he wants to take a few minutes to talk through um, what this will cost our taxpayers. Very good, thanks Superintendent Sleddy. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay, great. We um, can hear you, Levi. Great, thank you. Um, so like Superintendent Sledi said, Levi Bachmer, uh, business manager for the school district. Uh, so what is this going to cost? And we want to be really transparent about that. There's a lot of additional factors that um, we can talk about too. But at the simplest level, the impact um, on individual homeowners is very similar to the 2018 bond referendum. You can see on here that the estimated levy is 16.3 mils um, compared to the 2018 bond referendum that was uh, 16.14 mils. Um, obviously, valuations impact these calculations, and there's a lot of factors. Um, but the, at the highest level, some, some points that people, I think, have uh, been able to find this easy to understand. Uh, is the tax impact is very similar to the 2018 bond referendum. Um, if approved, we would continue to tax less than Fargo Public Schools. We're doing that right now. This would continue. The uh, election was successful, um, and we have been working really hard to retire and restructure debt to minimize um, the impact. So this says that it, it would cost us up to or about 16 mils. Uh, the school district has actually reduced its mill levy uh, over the last two years to cover almost 85% of these costs. But at the end of the day, when we're talking about what does this mean for you from a cost standpoint, you can see this table on the bottom, um, which outlines home value on a per $100,000 basis, uh, what those costs would be. This would be the maximum amount, which is why it says up to. Uh, we have an additional inflation factor built into the bond referendum, just knowing how uh, how interesting our construction market has been. Uh, and so we would only tap that additional um, inflationary amount if absolutely necessary. So you can calculate these are all indexed to $100,000 of value, um, but we're hoping to be able to do a lot of offsetting as well, um, or plan to regardless of the outcome. So this does not, I would say, does not state the net impact over what we've been trying to accomplish, but it certainly does uh, in black and white relative to if we didn't have this, um, if we did not have uh, this go through, what, what would that cost and what would it look like as it relates to people's property tax statements? All right, so next voting, where and when can I do this? So just the ballot language is shown on the screen. Sometimes when you get into the booth and you're looking at the vote, you're you're wondering, okay, how, do, how should I vote on this? Yes means that you approve the measure as summarized. You would vote no if 
um, you reject it as it's summarized. So that's what this will look like. And then eligible voters are all, res all residents of West Fargo Public School District. So sometimes people think, even though Harwood is part of West Fargo School District, that they don't get to vote. Yes, West Fargo, Harwood, Horace, Riley's Acres, and then Fargo residents who attend West Fargo schools and are in the West Fargo boundaries have um, the opportunity to vote. And then I want to share with you that you may vote as an absentee ballot as of today. So absentee ballot applications can be picked up at the county auditor's office and they could be completed online using the Secretary of State's applica application um, on this website that I'm sharing with you now, the www.vote.nd.gov. And then download from that site and um, you could also call the auditor's office and have one mailed to you. So we're going to be doing um, the vote on September 26th. Um, I believe that um, these are the sites that are similar to the sites that we've used in the past. Um, there should be one near everyone who um, is in the district. It will be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you need to bring proof of birth date and residency to that voting opportunity. And then this is a really important slide. Um, if you have it up in front of you and you want to use a QR code, there's so much information available to you on our website. So each of the packages that I shared with you are available. Um, opportunities um, where you're going to um, email if you would like to vote um, now and do that. Um, there's also other information for you that maybe we didn't cover today, a Q and A. So I guess our, our really role is today to not tell you how to vote, whether it's a yes or a no, but to make sure that you have all the information that you need to make um, a vote that is meaningful to you and your family. I would also add that there is a group called The Voice that is um, promoting or encouraging people to vote. If you would like that information, you could check with the info and we'll share that with you. Um, there may be a group that is um, brought together that is um, hoping that the uh, bond referendum doesn't pass. If we have that information, we would share that with you as well. Again, our job is to make sure you have what you need to to vote on September 26th. So this was a little bit of a bumpy ride. You're our first um, virtual meeting today, but I will take questions if there are any in um the form, I remind you that those questions were in the description on YouTube that you could click on that link to submit your questions. And if we can't answer it today, we'll certainly get back to you. Do we have any questions today, Travis? Yes, can you hear me all right? I can hear you. All right, our first question touches on the elementary school. Okay. The question was, why do we need an additional elementary school if Meadow Lark is not even open yet? And that's a really good point. Actually, Meadow Lark was set to be open this fall. Um, after the pandemic, we really run into a lot of delays in um, whether it's workforce or getting the materials and equipment that we need to build our school. So it did not get open in time. And we need the school. That school should be open right now. Um, and our, our schools are very, very full. Um, but I just remind you back to that, the additional four to 600 students per year, um, our schools fill up very, very fast. So even if a capacity, for example, of a school is um, 1,200, say, at a middle school, um, just thinking about if you go to your favorite restaurant and the capacity is 120 people, if there's actually 120 people in the restaurant at that time, the restaurant feels very full. Um, it feels almost packed. So even, even with those numbers, 1,200, our schools are very full and we're exceeding those numbers in some of our areas. So in order to keep up with the growth, and I just would bring you back to um, what Mr. Bachmeyer was sharing, um, as we're retiring debt, we need to continue to keep up with the growth. And so just asking um, our, our tax our taxpayers and our families to consider the same level of um, support that you've provided in the past um, so that we can meet the name, needs of the numbers that are coming in. Any other questions? Yeah, so the next one we have here 
is the why is the projected total or project total about 133 million, but the bond is set for 147 million. So at the time that we completed the work of the task force, um, we had been working with our architects and um, those that could help us get that number together, that 133 million. Um, that was last March. By the time we came to the point where we need to bring it to a bond referendum and the cost of inflations, um, we were advised that we should consider a 10% inflationary rate that would be used just in case um, these, this inflation continues at the rate that it is so that we could complete our projects. We would not use that 10% if we don't have to. So um, it's there as a, a safety net as we're um, seeing what's happening in our in our community as far as inflation. Any other questions, Travis? Looks like we have one additional at the moment. And if more come in, I'll pop, or pop those up afterwards. But this last one, uh, I think you kind of touched on it on the absentee voting, but what if I can't be around for the day of the vote? Can I vote absentee or how do I do that? So if you wanna pop back to that absentee slide likely. Yes, absolutely. There's um, different ways on this slide that you can do absentee voting. So applications can be picked up at the county auditor's office. They can be completed online using the Secretary of State's application. And that's that www.vote.nd.gov um, or by calling the county auditor's office. Absentee ballots must be postmarked or delivered by the time frame provided by the county auditor. So just follow the guidelines with with that process, and um, you can vote. You can vote right away. It's open to vote right now. So feel free to to take advantage of that. It's actually pretty wise because when the day comes, September twenty sixth, if you're like me, who knows what that day looks like, and you might run out of time. So it's nice to just get that done with in advance. Anything else, Travis? At the moment, there are no additional questions, but I do just want to say this will be open for a little bit longer here. I, I really th thank you all for being here. Okay, I'm bringing you back to questions can also be submitted after this to the info at west-fargo.k12.nd.us or via Facebook or Twitter pages. So um, this isn't the end of these conversations. It's really just the beginning. Um, I thank you all again for taking time from your lunch and for being a little bit patient with us as we work through um, a few technical difficulties. And I wish you all a great day.